Hello everyone, welcome back to Alisa Life Soul Vlog. I have some news for you today. So October 1, 2022, it was announced that there will be no more deployment of J-1 visa teachers here in the USA. And it will resume for the next school year. So before, um, wala talagang time limit. Even December, pwedeng pumunta ang mga teachers from the Philippines and teach here as a J-1 teacher. But this year, they put a deadline. So, October 1 ng talaga, pwedeng makapasok ang isang J-1 teacher dito sa US because they want to make sure na makastart talaga sa first semester at least yung mga J-1 teachers and wait na naman for the next school year. So, bali, hayo nila na uh, mag-start ang isang teacher around second semester na. So, this is actually um, not so good news um, to a lot of people, especially for those who are still waiting for a job offer or waiting for their visa process to finish. Now, do not be sad because there will still be a perfect time for you to come here. And this other news I will say is for everyone who are still praying and hoping to teach here in the U.S. Yes, this is for you. You can now start your application for the school year 2023-2024. You may ask, is it too early? The answer is no. Hear me out first, all right? The most common problems of teachers this year was time. They ran out of time. Many of them started their application around February, March. Um, actually, wala namang problema doon because that's really the perfect time to apply because that's the hiring season. But ang naging problema is, during those times, sobrang busy nyo din sa school nyo. Kasi nga, di ba sa Philippines, graduation months yung March or April. So, hindi talaga nabibigyan ng time yung pag apply So, ang nangyari is, eventually, you were able to get your job offer but too late na. So, wala nang program sponsor. Kasi ganito pala yung nangyayari. Um, maraming mga teachers na nag apply na in advance. So, when the program sponsor accepts new applicants again around January, start na sila agad ng visa process nila. Kaya pala na maraming visa sponsor na around March pa lang, close na sila or hindi na sila nag accept kasi nga puno na pala sila. So, do not do the same mistake. Okay? So, this is your chance to start your application now. You may you might say, "My hiring pa ba? Yes. Ang hiring naman dito sa US is all year round. When you check district website, you will still see a lot of hiring um, available positions. So, you may not be able to come here this year, but there's no reason not to apply. Okay? So, you apply for those positions na available pa. Now, if the principal invite you for an interview and eventually offer you a job offer, then you can negotiate. First, you can say, if you want me to stay permanently in your school, you can offer me an H-1B visa. This visa is not easy to take because it involves a lot of um, process and the district is also legally required to pay for the fees. So, if they really like you and they really want you to work permanently in the U.S., then they might offer you H-1B. So, ang H-1B din naman, hindi din yan siya madali kasi nga it will take around siguro 6 months to process and you will need a good immigration lawyer and an agency to really help you with the process. But, ang maganda sa H-1B is you can stay permanently because you can change your visa to a green card. Now, another thing you can negotiate. What if they will say, well, sorry, we cannot do H-1B sponsorship. Then you can tell them if you can save this offer for the next school year so that when it when comes January I could start my visa application I could I can start my visa process right away so see there's really no reason for you to wait until January to apply no one na pagdating ng January marami nang nasa unahan diba so if you are really interested to come here and teach in the U.S., don't waste your time. Start sending your application now. Um, if you are a math teacher, English, science, elementary, most especially SPED teachers, um, start your application now. So those who are kindergarten teachers, you might say you don't have any chance. 
I am a kindergarten teacher here. I've been teaching here for six years now. This is my seventh year. And yes, in demand tayo dito. Ang kindergarten naman dito is part ng basic education nila. So, um, even if elementary graduate ka and then you experience most kindergarten, then you can teach kindergarten as well. So, hindi talaga very strict sila sa early childhood. But mas maganda talaga if you have masters in early childhood. So, yun talaga most ideal. Now, um, what are the requirements that you need to prepare if you want to start your application now? First is your transcript of records. So your transcript of records um, can be evaluated now or you can wait until you get your job offer. So hindi siya required talaga na evaluated na. Now I will ask you this. If you have the money to do the evaluation and you are really sure that you will apply in the U.S., well, do it now. Because maraming teachers na ready na sana yung job offer nila but they need to wait for two or three more weeks for their evaluation to be done before they can start their application, their visa process. So, if you have the money, go for it. But if you don't have it yet, do not force it. You can wait until you get your job offer. Alright? Another requirement that you need to prepare is recommendation letters. This is very important here. Um, your recommendation letter should come from your principal. It could be current or your former principal and two colleagues as long as two other teachers that you were able to work um, in the past or you're working currently. Next is your certificate of employment. So you can ask this from your principal, from your HR, if you're in private school, or your service record. So you need to have that one. Um, as much as possible, all the positions that you had in the past include that as well. And also, um, you need to have your PRC license. It should be as, as much as possible valid. Um, if you haven't renewed it, that's okay, but make sure that you are in the process of renewing it. And last is, of course, your resume. So it's important that you have your resume. Remember, a resume in the U.S. should not be very long, as much as possible, one-page resume because it is just a reflection of your professional profile. They just want to know if you're qualified or not. You don't need to write every seminar that you've attended. So um, if you need some tips on how to do a good resume, you can message me or you can watch my vlogs on how to make your application competitive. So yes, um, I hope that this video will give you a sense of hope that um, someday you will be here and we will see each other and you will say to yourself that I did it. Okay, so guys, um, thank you so much for always watching my videos and supporting my channel. Thank you so much. I hope that you can share my videos to your friends who are interested to come and try teaching here in the USA. So I hope to see you all here um, in Arizona. So thank you everyone and see you in my next video.